Hey there, YouTubers. Welcome back to another Tesla electric car video with me, Adam Well-Informed. Straight to the point, I think people, media news outlets, and the worst corporates, the governments around the world, are wrong to push electric cars in the way that they currently do, and that's in my opinion. But it's not what you think, and you're going to find out why and how they should sell Tesla Model 3s and electric cars alike. To understand the issues of today, let's briefly go back in time and look at when electric cars were introduced to the market and why electric cars like the Tesla Model 3 exist in the first place. I mean, I think everyone surely must know or is aware that electric cars exist because of the climate crisis, right? Well, I'm not sure global warming and the climate crisis was well known in the 1800s when small-scale electric vehicles were first produced. It wasn't until the late 1890s and the 1900s until electric cars were being produced in the numbers and really began to gather steam. And by steam, I literally mean steam-powered cars were a thing. But that had its problems and it never really gathered any steam itself. Oh dear Adam, what a poor pun. With steam out of the way, the next generation of personal transport was a head-to-head. -head. Either it was going to be a gasoline-based car or an electrified car. At first, electric cars held many advantages, such as having an easier startup, and I mean by not having to manually crank it. EVs were less noisy and not so smelly like its internal combustion rival. The advantages, however, were short lived, and the combustion cars, such as the Model T by Ford, really thrusted themselves into the history books. With its low cost and ever expanding infrastructure, partially thanks to the discovery of Texas crude oil. It helped made fuel widely and easily available across the US, cheap to buy and just enabled personal motorised transport for out of cities and urban locations. Combined with the fact that the Model T was around 2.5 times cheaper to buy than the electric Roadster at the time, not to be confused with the Tesla Roadster. EVs were simply priced out on merit and not on environmental factors. So why does the history matter? Well, expanding on my initial statement, simply stating to a friend that they should buy a Tesla Model 3 or they must buy this electric car to save the planet is not going to work with everyone. That won't convert the hardcore petrol heads. Transition has to be encouraged from alternative routes too. So whilst EV sales continue to gain market share month for month and year on year, how can we convince the petrol heads and, and just overall the doubters in general to switch? You can't twist their arm and get them to acquire an EV on environmental factors, hence their delay in the first place. There needs to be more, so what's the angle I'd take? The answer is simply merit. History states that the combustion car won a merit before, so how can we learn from history? This is why if the electric car wants to be king, it has to be better than its petrol and diesel alternatives, and the Model 3 and the Model Y can be the Model T of today. But what about range, Adam? EVs can't beat petrol and diesel cars in range, it's just not possible. Well, let's get into the details of what the merits are folks, and before we do that, it would really really help me out if you could hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're looking forward to the video, or if you like EV content like this. So the first merit that I want to scream about electric cars, and especially the Tesla Model 3, is that it fixes a core and repetitive burden of the internal combustion car. It's so core to the combustion engine, despite over 100 years of innovation and whilst reliability has improved, it's not improved enough for automakers to remove their requirement for an annual service each year. An internal combustion car can have over 2,000 moving parts in comparison to an EV motor that can have just 12 moving parts. Now translating that into plain talking English, with the help of a statement from Kia's website, I don't think I could say it any better. I quote, Unlike internal combustion vehicles, electric cars are more reliable with the fact that they have fewer moving parts. The simplicity of the electric motor that drives electric vehicles, perhaps half a dozen moving parts which motors contain, which leads to less wear and tear of components, requires considerably less maintenance than conventional vehicles, no oil to change, no gaskets to replace, no valves to clog up. Electric vehicles do not have internal combustion engines, so these costs disappear. By comparison, internal combustion engine cars, especially as cars age, engine maintenance can be a huge money spending. Now, Tesla is head above shoulders on this because for the Tesla Model 3 and the Tesla Model Y, there is no annual servicing requirements. 
unless you truly want to have one. So think about that, a car that has been built to not require an annual service in comparison to the internal combustion car, whereby every new car sale, the salesman would then try force a sales plan with your purchase. So do you pick the car that's designed with less reliability issues or do you pick the car that requires a garage visit each year? But what about the long term reliability item? The battery is going to melt and degrade because it's just a traditional lithium ion battery. Well, hold that thought Einstein. You may have seen articles like this from Sky. At first glance, without reading the article, the headline does not make EV's reliability sound well at all. But the devil is in the detail. Five paragraphs down, we are told that the most common faults of electric vehicles, according to drivers surveyed, were software issues, not the motor or battery problems. I've experienced this myself more recently. My boot would only open up three quarters of the way, and that would happen intermittently. I flagged it to Tesla via my smartphone app, and I was told a service appointment was not needed, and a software update over the air would fix this issue. So, I slept from the comfort of my own home as the problem was fixed overnight. But what about the battery, Adam? You've probably had multiple laptops, and the batteries on them are piss poor. Well, whilst both products are battery powered, they're not quite the same. It's like comparing the original Star Wars trilogy to the prequels. We know they're the same, but they're leagues apart. Okay, probably a poor comparison, but my point is laptops are mass produced with cost in mind, and the battery management system is nothing in comparison to the Tesla Model 3. Even when the car is parked, the car is actively managing the battery, keeping it at a temperature that doesn't negatively affect the reliability of the battery, and so its range does not get degraded at an accelerated rate. A fresh and solid fact to back up my point is from the new 2021 impact report from Tesla. Look at the Model S and X that would have been from their older designs too. The range remaining for vehicles after 200,000 miles had been clocked looks to have degraded just short of 90% of its original maximum, effectively losing between 20 to 30 miles worth of range after 200,000 miles. For me, that's an insane level of retention considering the mileage that has been racked up. And going back to Kia's original statement earlier, with the internal combustion engine, it has thousands of moving parts that wear away, injectors and valves that can clog. Fundamentally, as the car ages, its fuel economy would drop and so losing range and losing performance. With enhancements in battery technology, we also have different battery chemistries that we can take advantage of and enhance reliability of an electric car. Take a look at the Tesla Model 3 rear-wheel drive or the Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. This has a lithium-ion phosphate battery, which is designed to be more hard-wearing than the battery packs of the cars shown in that graph that I showed earlier for the Model S and X. So I think it's fair to say that both maintenance and the reliability in comparison to a combustion car is way, way better. But Adam, you're forgetting range. Petrol, gasoline or diesel cars have way better range. And you know what? You're right. But don't try it. Oh boy, do I feel like Obi-Wan Kenobi from Revenge of the Sith when he has the high ground over Anakin. But back to the range debate. Hands up, the range may be better for now. However, reframe the question. Are you going to use that range? In other understandable terms to you, bigger isn't always better. It's not about how big the nail is. It's about how you hammer the nail in. And I really think I'm losing the plot here. What I'm trying to relate is how often are you testing the vehicle's range on a daily basis? Doing over 300 miles a day daily is not really representable. Did you know driving 300 miles at motorway or highway speeds roughly would take about 4 hours? And if so, and you drove for 4 hours straight without stopping, would you need to stop for a number 1 before that 4 hour or 300 mile limit? Also, is the term a number 1 an international term or known in the US? If not, in the UK it's code for a wee and a number 2 is well, the smelly one. The point is, it's not healthy to drive for such a long period of time without stopping for a short break. Not just from a mental concentration standpoint, but just more of the convenience of taking that wee and having that lunch or dinner etc. So that 300 WOTP mile range that the Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus has, day to day, you're not going to scratch the surface. Those longer and infrequent trips that you take, 
just combine a charging stop and a meal together. Charging for 15 minutes will return 200 of those miles for you to continue with your journey. There is no way that you can go to the loo and order some warm food and eat it quicker than 15 minutes, surely. If you're new to electric cars and want to get a better idea on range between the Standard Range Plus and the Model 3 Long Range, take a look at the video on the screen now. But charging for 30 minutes is just ridiculous, Adam. But if you're thinking that charging your car for 30 minutes is just a ridiculous amount of time, Adam, and that you can just refill a petrol car in 5 to 10 minutes, Surely that's a no-brainer right there. Well, to round off how EVs are better on merit, we have to cover this charging argument. So whilst you can refill a combustion car quicker, as we've just worked out, what are you doing when you're refilling it for 5-10 to 10 minutes? If I go back, I remember just watching the money tick up, you know, and I'm starting to look at the advertisements that's on the pump handle, and then I'm starting to look at other users, and then I'm starting to look at their cars. If I had the option of what I could have done in that time, I think I can fit that time in with something much more productive rather than observing things I didn't really want to do. For two thirds of the UK that have off-road parking facilities, we can park up and charge from home. I literally insert the plug into the car, walk back into my house and do what I want to do. It's locked up into place safely and it will start charging when electric is the cheapest and then stop when it's full or when my more expensive day rates kicks in. I spend one minute, maybe even 30 seconds doing this maybe every other couple of days. But if anyone thinks that this is inconvenient, you should know that reality is far from the truth. But Adam, what about public charging? Well, we sort of just covered this earlier. These chargers are usually located next to facilities that you want to see. And a little tip for those with or without Teslas is that you can actually see the real-time data of what's in use and what isn't. Plus, you can also see the local amenities before you arrive, so you can get a flavour of what to expect or you know when to hide your wallet from the other half, just in case they want to venture into a shop for some essentials, as they say. My point is, charging is not so boring and can be exciting as you want it to be, from in-car entertainment to using local amenities. It's far more entertaining and far more convenient than you'd ever expect. Plus, having a mobile charger with you at any time can help you charge from literally anywhere at any time. You can't say that about petrol cars, can you? So, to conclude, to truly convert everyone, the car has to be better on merit. Dictating what an individual can and can't buy isn't the route governments and media news outlets should go. Ultimately, people do react to that attitude and consumers deserve a better experience rather than an inferior one. Electric vehicles haven't had decades of innovation like internal combustion engines, but vehicles like the Tesla Model 3 and the Tesla Model Y are showing with technology today just how and why they can be more convenient and better than your ICE vehicle today. I've not even touched on acceleration, autopilot, and just generally the technology behind the car, but not only do I feel confident that these will deliver a better experience for most people, they are also cheaper to run, and if you haven't seen my full cost for my first year of ownership on my Tesla Model 3, I'll also link that video to the screen now for your reference. Therefore, these vehicles have a solid case for most people to transition to today. Governments should be doing more than just saying that we should transition for the benefit of the environment. Sadly, not everyone will react to zero emission vehicles seriously because they just have other priorities for their car. For them buyers, a zero emission car is literally just a byproduct of their choice. Governments should be painting a, a bigger or just a wider picture and media outlets probably need to tap into some better resources. Maybe them sources deal with EVs or drive EVs on a daily basis. Overall, I think electric cars are better on merit and detailing the hows and whys should hopefully pull those doubters on board too. Let me know in the comments below and if you don't know what to comment, you can comment Tesla has the high ground and I'll give you a cheeky thumbs up for doing so. See what I did there? Also, I still have my YouTube shorts post up about my wheel cover replacement and also I'm still replacing the suspected door ding on my door if you remember from my last video. Anyhow, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like the video and to share it among your friends and family if you found it useful. You've been great and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.